The Westing Game, Disc 4. Chapter 16 The Third Bomb. Boom! Grace Wexler slammed the door on the delivery boy's silly face and returned to her party with a pink ribboned gift. The gossiping guests were sipping jasmine tea from Westing paper party cups, nibbling on tidbits from Westing paper party plates, and wiping their fingers on Westing paper party napkins. Madame Hu served in a tight-fitting silk gown slit high up her thigh, a costume as old-fashioned and impractical as bound feet. Women in China wore blouses and pants and jackets. That's what she would wear when she got home. Grace clapped her hands for attention. Girls, girls, it's time for the bride-to-be to open her presents. Angela, you sit here and everybody gather round. Angela did as her mother said. She lowered herself to a cushion on the floor, ringed by gift boxes and surrounded by vaguely familiar faces. She hadn't invited her few friends from college. They were bent on careers. This wasn't their thing. These were her mother's friends, and the newly married daughters of her mother's friends, and Turtle, who was leaning against the wall, arms folded, smirking. Lucky Turtle, the neglected child. Read it out loud, dear, Grace ordered as Angela opened the card tied to the yellow ribboned box. To the bride-to-be in the kitchen stuck, an asparagus cooker and lots of luck from Cookie Barfspringer. Thank you, Angela said, wondering which one was the barf springer. The next gift was an egg poacher. The box in pink ribbons contained another asparagus cooker. I sure hope Dr. Deer likes asparagus, someone remarked. The giver said she could return it for something else, although two might come in handy. A doctor's wife has so much entertaining to do. Angela glanced at her watch and reached for the tall, thin carton wrapped in gold foil. Look how Angela's hands are shaking. She's as nervous as a groom. Giggles. Bride-to-be jitters. More giggles. Slowly, Angela unknotted the gold ribbon. Carefully, she unfolded the gold foil. How neatly she did everything, the perfect child not like Turtle, who ripped off wrappings impatient to see what was inside. Hurry up, Angela, you're such a poke, Turtle complained. Suddenly, there she was, kneeling down to peek under the lid. Get away, Angela cried, jerking the gift up and away from her sister as the lid blasted off with a shattering bang. Bang, bang, a rapid rat-a-tat-tat, Rockets shooting, fireballs bursting, comets shrieking, sparks sizzling. Two dozen framed flower prints falling off the wall. Then it was over. Screams hushed to whimpers, and the trembling guests crawled out from under tables and peered out of closets. Is anyone hurt? Grace Wexler asked nervously. Other than being scared out of ten years of their lives, thank you, they were fine. Where's Angela? Angela was still seated on the cushion in the middle of the floor. Fragments of scorched box lay in her burned hands. Blood oozed from an angry gash on her cheek and trickled down her beautiful face. Heirs beware, Sam Westing had warned. They should have listened. Now it was too late. The suspicious heirs gathered in the lobby around the police captain called in by Judge Ford. One of them was a murderer, they thought, and one of them was a bomber, and one of them was a thief. But which was which, and who was who? Or could it be one and the same? Some game, Mr. Who grumbled, unwrapping a chocolate bar. One ulcer wasn't enough. Sam Westing had to give him three more. Some game. The last one alive wins. Now there's a likely suspect, Otis Amber thought. Who the inventor? Who the angry man? The madman? The last one alive wins, 
Flora Bomback repeated. Oh my, what a terrible thing to say. Can't trust that dressmaker, Mr. Who thought. How come she's grinning at a time like this? The captain offered no help at all. Neither the bomb squad nor the burglary detail has enough evidence to search the apartments, he explained. You call that justice? Sandy asked. Good-natured Sandy couldn't be the one. He wasn't in the building when the first two bombs went off or when the judge's watch was stolen, Jake Wexler thought. On the other hand, he sure did hate Sam Westing. Yes, Mr. McSuthers, justice is exactly what I call it. Not her, not the judge, in spite of the clues, Chris thought. Unless she's one of those Black Panthers in disguise. Those weren't gas explosions, those were bombs, right? Theo pressed the captain. A nice kid, that Theo. Doug, too, Flora Bomback thought. But how often had she seen television interviews of next-door neighbors saying, can't believe he killed 13 people, he was such a nice kid. Oh my, oh my, what's gotten into me, thinking such a thing? The captain would not call them bombs. More like childish pranks, he said. Childish pranks? That brat's capable of anything. Turtle stuck out her tongue at the sneering Doug Who. Evil pranks of the devil, Crow muttered. Her blessed Angela was almost killed. Crow could be the one. Bring hellfire down on all of us, Theo whispered to Chris. But she wasn't in the building when the first two bombs went off. Yes, she was. No, she wasn't. The captain described the so-called bombs. Just a few fireworks triggered by a squat striped candle set in a tall open jar. The ribbon probably hid the air holes in the box. No one would have been hurt if the young lady hadn't tilted the box toward herself. A time bomb, Grace Wexler said, glaring at the person who delivered the gifts. An unhappy woman, that self-appointed heiress, the judge thought. Unfulfilled, possibly disturbed. Capable of the burglaries, perhaps, but not the bombings. She wouldn't have hurt her own daughter. At least, not Angela. Don't look at me like that, Otis Amber shouted at Mrs. Wexler. I don't own no striped candles and no fireworks neither. That idiot is the likeliest of all, Grace thought but he wasn't around when the coffee shop blew up. Ooh, Allah! The excitement was too much for Chris Theodorakis. That was one heir no one suspected. And Angela, of course. No one could suspect her. Otis Amber was not even sure of that. Still waters run deep, he said. <laughs> Turtle could not let him get away with that even if it was true. Otis Amber limps, Chris noted the next day. Her family kept reassuring her. You're going to be fine, Angela, just fine. The loud snore that erupted from the next hospital bed was Sidel Pulaski, pretending to be asleep. I still don't remember, Angela mumbled, her bandaged cheek made speaking difficult. Her face hurt. Her hands hurt. Hurt very much. Traumatic amnesia, Jake Wexler said. It happens after sudden accidents. Don't worry, Angie Pie, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine, Angela. Just fine, Grace said despondently. I'll be back tomorrow. Come, Turtle. In a minute... Turtle waited for the door to close. She touched her sister's bandaged hand. Thanks. For what? Another snore from Sedell. Just thanks. The fireworks would have gone off in my face if you hadn't pulled the box toward you. Here, I brought your tapestry bag. I didn't look at your notes or clues, honest. But she had removed the incriminating evidence. Turtle, tell me the truth. How bad is it? 
The doctor had to take some glass out of your hands, but no stitches. The burns will heal okay. And my face? Some scarring. Not bad, really, Angela. Besides, you always said being pretty wasn't important. It's who you really are that counts. Angela wondered about that. Maybe she was wrong. Maybe pretty was important. Maybe she was crazy. She must have been crazy. Don't worry, you'll still be pretty, Turtle said. But wow, that sure was a dumb thing to do. Sedell Pulaski's eyes popped open in surprise. Quickly, she squeezed them shut and uttered another loud snore. Well, what do you know? Her sweet, saintly partner was the bomber. Good for her.